A Harvard astrophysicist believes there's a strong likelihood this is a craft of alien origin and the implications obviously for humanity. What if the end of our world doesn't arrive with a blinding flash of light, but in the deepest, most absolute darkness imaginable? For generations, we have pointed our telescopes toward the heavens, searching for threats we could see gleaming asteroids or comets with brilliant, icy tails. But we were looking for the wrong thing. The true annihilation, the real killer, might be a perfect phantom, a hole in the fabric of space. Moving silently and completely unseen, humanity's greatest creation, the James Webb Space Telescope, was never meant to be a guardian. It was designed as a time machine, a golden eye to peer back into the cosmic dawn and witness the birth of the very first galaxies. But in its lonely vigil, a million miles from the warmth of home, it accidentally stumbled upon a secret it found, a terrifying intruder hurtling through the blackness of our own solar system. A discovery so profound and so alarming that it triggered a classified red alert within the highest echelons of NASA. For an object that doesn't just break the rules, it shatters them. The discovery didn't begin with the detection of an object, but with its perfect absence. In a deep field image, meant to capture galaxies billions of light years away, a small team of astrophysicists noticed an anomaly, a tiny moving patch of utter blackness. It was a void, a moving silhouette that was systematically blotting out the ancient light from behind it. It was a ghost in the machine. As they tracked it, a chilling realization washed over them. This was a physical object, but it was cloaked in a darkness our technology was never prepared for. Its surface, a material darker than fresh asphalt, absorbs more than 99.9% .9 of all light that strikes it. It was a true stealth killer, a phantom drifting through the cosmos. It was only by a one in a billion chance that the James Webb Telescope, with its unparalleled ability to perceive the faintest traces of infrared heat, even noticed its cold signature against the near-absolute zero of deep space. For weeks, this ghost was a mere curiosity, a whisper in the terabytes of data. But its profound invisibility was only the first layer of the mystery. The way it moved was the second, and it seemed to mock the very laws of physics that govern our universe. Every comet and asteroid we have ever tracked follows a clean, predictable arc, a path dictated by the immense gravitational pull of the sun and planets. But this object was different. It moved with a strange chaotic wobble, a drunken tumble through space as if it were being constantly nudged by invisible forces. The world's best orbital analysts fed the data into supercomputers, but the models kept breaking. They couldn't predict its path with any certainty. As they refined the calculations, a horrifying reality began to crystallize. This wasn't going to be a new. Its erratic trajectory was on a direct intersection course with Earth's orbit. Rumors began to circulate on encrypted networks between observatories that its chaotic dance was too complex to be natural. Something was causing it to shift its course in ways that defied explanation. The way it moved was deeply alarming. But what it was made of would completely rewrite everything we thought we knew about our place in the cosmos. As more data poured in from the web, the object's true, terrifying identity was revealed. It was traveling at a velocity so extreme, so far beyond the escape velocity of our sun, that it could not have possibly originated from within our solar system. This was an interstellar intruder, a wanderer from the vast empty chasm between the stars, but unlike Amamua, the first interstellar visitor that briefly passed through our neighborhood, this one wasn't just visiting, this one was here to stay. A spectroscopic analysis of the faint light it failed to absorb left scientists speechless. It wasn't made of the familiar rock or ice of our system. It was composed of an impossibly dense blend of heavy metals and exotic elements, materials forged in the heart of a dying star or a planetary system that was obliterated billions of years ago. It was, quite literally, a messenger from a dead star. An artifact from a distant shattered world is a scientific miracle. But this one wasn't just passing by, and humanity's plans to defend itself were terrifyingly inadequate. For a fleeting moment, the world's defense agencies felt a surge of pride. 
NASA's recent DART mission had been a stunning success, proving that humanity could launch a probe to strike an asteroid and successfully alter its course. But that pride quickly evaporated and curdled into sheer terror. The DART mission was the equivalent of a BB gun. This new object was a nuclear warhead. Its mass was estimated to be the size of a mountain, and its interstellar velocity gave it a kinetic energy that dwarfed anything humanity could ever create. A sobering, soul-crushing truth settled over the world's space agencies. They were completely and utterly powerless. They couldn't stop it. They couldn't divert it. All they could do was watch. Humanity had been reduced from a species of explorers and builders to mere spectators at our own potential extinction. With no hope of stopping it, the world's sharpest minds turned to a far more horrifying question. What would actually happen when it arrived? Three distinct scenarios emerged from the simulations, each one a different flavor of Armageddon. The first was a continental impact. If the objects struck land, it would release more energy than all the nuclear weapons on Earth combined. It would blast a crater hundreds of kilometers wide, and the resulting shockwave would flatten cities across entire continents. But the immediate blast would be the gentle part. So much dust and debris would be thrown into the atmosphere that it would block out the sun, plunging the Earth into a global winter for decades. Photosynthesis would cease, crops would fail, and civilization as we know it would freeze to death in the dark. The second scenario was an oceanic impact. The kinetic energy would instantly vaporize trillions of tons of seawater, creating an atmospheric blast of superheated steam. It would trigger mega tsunamis thousands of feet high, traveling at the speed of a jetliner. These waves wouldn't just crash on coastlines. They would scour them clean, pushing miles inland and wiping every coastal city off the face of the planet. But the third scenario was, in many ways, the most terrifying because of its sheer unpredictability. The object could fracture upon entering our atmosphere, turning a single, devastating bullet into a global shotgun blast. Hundreds of smaller, but still city-killing, fragments would rain down across every continent simultaneously. It would be a planetary bombardment, a global firestorm from which there would be no escape. But as scientists worked around the clock, staring into the abyss, a few of them reportedly noticed something in the data faint, structured pattern that was so unbelievable, it was immediately classified at the highest levels. It's been whispered in the halls of government that faint repeating pulses of energy have been detected emanating from the object. This claim has ignited a firestorm of secret, frantic debate. Most scientists insist it's nothing more than instrumental noise or a natural phenomenon. A strange interaction with the solar wind, but a small, brave minority are reportedly arguing that the pulses are too structured, too rhythmic, and too complex to be random. They believe it could be a signal. This has led to the ultimate, terrifying question that keeps world leaders awake at night. Is this just a dead piece of a shattered planet, a mindless rock hurtling through the void? Or is it something more? Is it a derelict alien craft, a warning, from a distant intelligence, or far, far worse, a weapon, natural rock or alien messenger, the object maintained its cold, indifferent silence. But soon, the world would know the truth. This is the nightmare scenario we've always feared but never truly believed could happen. A stealth object from the graveyard of another star, moving on an unstoppable collision course, carrying hints of something far beyond our comprehension. The James Webb Telescope was built to show us our cosmic origins, to let us see where we came from. In a final cruel twist of fate, it may have just shown us our end. It has revealed that we are not alone in the universe, but the first greeting from the cosmos might also be our last. Our world has always felt so permanent, so solid beneath our feet. But the truth is, we live on a fragile sunlit island in an endless dark ocean and something from the deep is finally rising to the surface. Asterisk Artificial Intelligence Systems The results astonished researchers in ways few anticipated. The sheer depth of insight extracted from the data pointed to characteristics that were not easily reconcilable with existing theories of asteroid formation, interstellar migration, 
or even the physics of matter in deep space. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The initial findings revealed through Google AI's processing were far more detailed than traditional computational models could have ever achieved in such a short time. Scientists had collected high-resolution readings of 3Y Atlas as it passed through, including spectroscopic measurements, trajectory data, and unusual variations in reflectivity. Feeding this into our eye meant processing terabytes of scattered signals that would take years of human analysis. Instead, within days, patterns began to emerge, offering a portrait of this object that was richer and stranger than anything the scientific community expected. One of the most shocking, for nearly 30 years, a ghost has haunted the world of music. A murder without a killer, a mystery with no answers, a story that became a legend. The death of Tupac Shakur was a wound that never healed. But in 2023, the silence that had protected a killer for decades was shattered by an arrest that no one saw coming. The question is, does this finally solve one of the most infamous crimes in history, or does it just expose how deep the darkness really runs? Because the man they took in, Cuffs wasn't hiding in the shadows. He had been confessing, in plain sight, for years. The story of Tupac's final day began in the electric glare of Las Vegas on September 7, 1996. The city was buzzing, alive with the energy of a Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand. Tupac was at the absolute peak of his fame and power, the undisputed king of West Coast hip-hop. Walking through the casino with the notorious head of Death Row Records, Suga Knight. But in a flash, the glamorous night turned ugly. A member of Tupac's entourage spotted a man in the crowd, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, a known member of the rival Southside Compton Crips gang. Words were exchanged, and then chaos erupted. The MGM's security cameras captured it, all Tupac himself leading a vicious beatdown as he and his crew kicked and stomped Anderson on the casino floor. It was a brutal, public act of dominance. And it was the spark that lit a fatal fuse. Hours later, the violence found its echo in the dark. Tupac was riding in the passenger seat of a black BMW with Suge Knight behind the wheel. They were part of a long procession of cars, heading to a nightclub, the energy still high from the fight. As they stopped at a red light on the crowded Flamingo Road, a white Cadillac, seemingly out of nowhere, silently pulled up alongside them. A hand emerged from the back window, holding a gun. In a matter of seconds, a hail of bullets tore through. The side of the BMW, the Cadillac then vanished into the Las Vegas night as quickly as it had appeared. Suga Knight, a mountain of a man, was only grazed by the gunfire. But Tupac had been hit four times. The ambush was ruthlessly efficient, a professional hit executed in the middle of a busy street. The king had been shot down, and the mystery had just begun. In the crucial days and weeks that followed, the investigation hit an immediate and impenetrable brick wall. The most important witness, Suga Knight, who was sitting inches away from the gunman, told police he saw and heard nothing. Other members of Tupac's entourage, who were in the cars directly behind him, also refused to cooperate. The investigation was paralyzed by the powerful code of the street, an unwritten law that forbids talking to the police, a rule of silence that is often stronger than the law itself. Police had a prime suspect almost immediately, Orlando Anderson, the man who had been beaten just hours before the shooting. It was a clear and obvious motive for revenge. But with no witnesses willing to point the finger, they had nothing. Anderson denied everything, and the case went cold, leaving a vacuum that would soon be filled with rumor and speculation. With the truth buried under a code of silence, a storm of conspiracy theories erupted. The most popular narrative was that this was the bloody climax of the infamous East Coast vs. West Coast hip-hop war. Suspicion fell on Tupac's biggest rival, the notorious B.I.G., and his powerful producer, Sean Puffy Combs. It was said they had ordered the hit in retaliation, for years of feuding and insults. Another dark theory pointed inward, suggesting it was an inside job. Rumors spread that Suga Knight himself had set up his star artist, 
Reports claimed that Tupac was planning to leave Death Row Records and that Suga owed him millions of dollars in unpaid royalties. In this version of the story, the shooting was a brutal business decision. And then there was the most enduring myth of all, that Tupac Shocker never died. Fueled by his seemingly endless stream of posthumous music released under the name Machiavelli, fans speculated that he had faked his own death to escape the pressures of his life. For decades, these legends were all the world had, but all the while, the real story was hiding in plain sight. A man named Dwayne Kef D. Davis, a high-ranking member of the Southside Compton Crips, started talking, and what he said was unbelievable. Kef D was Orlando Anderson's uncle, and he was there that night. In a series of shocking on-camera interviews for documentaries and even in his own self-published memoir, he laid it all out. He openly admitted that he was in the white Cadillac that pulled up next to Tupac's car. He said he was in the front passenger seat and that he passed the gun to his nephew in the back, who then opened fire. He confessed his role in one of the most famous murders in history, time and time again. It raised an astonishing question that baffled the public. How could a man publicly confess his part in a murder plot and continue to walk free for over a decade? Then, in the fall of 2023, nearly 27 years after that night in Vegas, the world was stunned. Police swarmed a house in Nevada and arrested Dwayne Kef D. Davis. The man who had been talking for years was finally in custody, charged with the murder of Tupac Shakur. The arrest revealed a new legal strategy. Prosecutors weren't just charging him as an accomplice, they named him as the shot caller and leader of the conspiracy. Their case was built on his own public statements, arguing that he orchestrated the murder as retaliation for the attack on his nephew with the purpose of restoring the reputation of their gang. After decades of silence, secrets, and wild speculation, law enforcement was officially confirming the oldest and simplest theory of all, that this was a classic, brutal case of street revenge. The arrest of Kef D seems to have finally closed the book on a mystery that haunted a generation. The story no longer belongs to the realm of conspiracy, but to a courtroom. The motive appears to be what police suspected all along, a violent gang retaliation for a public humiliation. Yet, even with a suspect awaiting trial, a sense of unease remains. Does this long-delayed arrest truly represent justice? Or is it simply the final, tragic chapter in a story of fame, violence, and a deadly code of silence? A code that allowed a killer to live freely in the open for decades while the ghost of a legend became more powerful in death than he ever was in life. Asterisk suggesting that the asteroid had endured extreme conditions, perhaps near the violent remnants of a supernova or within regions of interstellar radiation storms. These findings led scientists to wonder whether such objects could carry information about environments long thought inaccessible to direct study. The trajectory analysis was equally compelling. Standard gravitational mapping predicted one path, but the AI's deeper analysis revealed subtle deviations in movement that appeared linked to outgassing. Events not visible asterisk, through traditional telescopic observations. The patterns were so faint that only the AI's ability to correlate millions of slight variances in data could piece them together. This suggested that 3Y Atlas was not simply a frozen rock tumbling through space, but rather a dynamic body exhibiting activity, possibly shedding materials as it traveled. The implications were immense. Interstellar asteroids might not be dormant, but could undergo processes that alter their structure mid-journey, potentializing new systems with 